Texas Rangers manager, Bruce Bochy. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, guys. How's it going? Well, we are doing great. Not as great as Andrew Heaney, but still great nonetheless. What was it like to watch that strikeout parade yesterday? I tell you what, it it was special. Uh, you know, I I had never seen that. Uh, you know, I I did see a couple uh, replays of uh, uh, Peavy who pitched for me, but he did in 2007. So I told him thanks for uh, wait till I left. But uh, it is really cool to watch. Uh, that's so hard to do, and uh, uh, it's something that uh, you know it's a rare feat, as you know. He can shoot. Uh, uh, but just showed you the stuff that he had last night. He had that good, good extra hop on his fastball. He had a good slider going. Uh, uh, just fun to watch. Well, Mike always talks about, you know, game plan and going into and, you know, you're you're kind of focusing sometimes on like maybe three hitters in a lineup. Some guys do. Was that more just the stuff that the way it was coming out of his hand, the way he was throwing? Or did he really commit more to I'm gonna make sure I know everything about guys one through nine here? Oh, I think last night was just uh, more a case of uh, that being more of who Andrew Heaney is uh, with the stuff that he had. He's got, uh, you know, he's got that, uh, we call it a, a unicorn fastball that uh, when he's got that uh, that little hop to it, man, it's just hard to catch up with. It's hard to lay off. And uh, he, he was just a different pitcher than what he's been uh, the last couple outings. Uh uh, the, his first start in that last start against the Cubs in spring training, uh, you know, stuff was a little flatter. And sometimes you go through a dead arm, whatever. But uh, last night he had it, and uh, and that was evident. And uh, and so we saw a different pitcher. Boach, I know they're different pitchers, but you had Mad Bum, and now you have Heaney, and they kind of show their back to the hitter, and then kind of have a little bit of a slingy motion to throwing the ball. Can you talk about? I know you used to be a hitter as a hitter. Uh, the difference in picking up uh, pitches, especially from a left-handed pitcher, when they kind of turn their back to you and come from an angle almost where they're throwing where the second baseman would be playing. Yeah, you know, it's pitching, yeah, so much of it's about deception. And uh, when uh, you can hide the ball and pitchers do it in different ways, they may use that front arm, uh, they may turn their back and uh, – and uh, Andrew, he's a guy, as you mentioned, similar to Bumgarner. Uh, they turn their back uh, to the hitter. So, you know, they don't pick up the ball as quick. And uh, so that, you know, 91, 92, it looks more like a 96, 97. Uh, it's just a different fastball where you can have a guy throwing 97, 98, but, you know, he's open a little bit. The hitter sees it well, doesn't play as fast. So uh, that works for uh, uh, Andrew. And, uh, um and same thing with Bum and uh, hitters just uh, don't see it as well. And now when you get that little added hop that you normally have, uh, it makes it that much tougher. So I know I'm going back in your day, Boach. Who was the guy that you had the hardest time picking up their pitches? Uh, and back in my day when I first started was my first year, uh, J.R. Richard. I mean, the guy was 6'9". Six eight six nine. It felt like he was going to hand the ball to you. He threw uh, threw over a hundred. Had a slider at ninety three, ninety four, uh, and you just didn't see it well. I mean, it's real slow uh, delivery. And he kind of turned too, and, uh, and here he came. And plus, he didn't have the best control. You know, <laughs> Nolan was on that team too. And uh, but what Nolan had, he had a lot better control than what people thought. Uh, but Jr., you know, he would wing one up and in or down the way. It, it didn't matter where you were sitting. But it, it, yeah, this guy would have been in the Hall of Fame if he didn't uh, have a stroke. I'm looking at a picture of him right now, and it looks like he has nine baseballs in one hand, and that's just that seems like a giant man right there. He was giant hands. Uh, you know, he could hit a little bit. A great athlete. Got, actually, could run a little bit too. And. Uh, uh, just a shame what happened because he he was a really uh, special pitcher. I know it's early in the season, so you can only go off what you've been able to judge thus far. Ten games. Y'all have already had three games where you scored 11 or more runs, including last night, but also been shut out twice. Have you seen any dynamic of, you know, you want to make sure you don't have a feast or famine offense going this season? 
Well, yeah, I'll be honest. You like to see it spread out a little bit better. I'll talk to him about that. You know, let's save, save a few of these runs. But, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, trust me, you think about it sometimes. Uh, but, you know, that pitcher out there in the mound, sometimes he'll dictate that. But because, uh, you know, we, I expect us to play in a lot of low-scoring games. Uh, but uh, I'm not going to lie. It's nice to, you know, break out. I think it does a lot for, uh, you know, the hitter's confidence. It does a lot for uh, – the ability to, to, you know, use the bullpen like uh, you would want to. So, um, but I, I think when, you know, I, as we get in this, I think you're going to see a team that will be a little bit more balanced and, uh, you know, not, not get shut down quite as much as we have in early go. And, uh, um, and I think if you look across uh, uh, the league, you're seeing a lot of teams have big games. I think the Phillies scored 15 last night. I mean, you, you're seeing more games like that. So teams get settled in, get their bullpen settled in. These starters uh, get uh, stretched out and things. First place, Texas Rangers manager Bruce mm. Bochy joined us here on the KNC Masterpiece on 105.3 The Fan over the weekend. You did have the five-error game, and I was just kind of curious on management style with something like that, especially this early in the season. Do you do you attack that and sit and talk to the guys, or do you say, you know what, I'm gonna let I'm gonna see how they figure it out? What's your approach to that? Well, every game's going to be a little bit different. Uh, I'm talking about every game like that. Uh, yeah. You know, I did say just a few words. Uh, uh, you know, I did. You know, in, in their hitters meetings, uh, meeting there, and uh, so listen. I, you know, we're going to have days like this. Uh, every team in baseball does, and I don't think I'm going to meet with you every time we have an off day. You, you know, you guys are men. Uh, you know, what's important is not that it happens, how we deal with this, and. Uh, you know, part of being a good club and a, a club that uh, wants to go where we want to go is being resilient. And and uh, now it's time to bounce back and, you know, find a way to win a ball game and uh, put this behind us. And, uh, you know, it's something like that. Uh, but, you know, you, you're you not going to do it every game. But uh, I just, you know, as they're getting to know me and I'm getting to know them, I just want to, you know, them to make sure, hey, I, I get it. I, I know we're going to have off days. Shoot. And that game, I could have done something a little different in that bullpen. Uh, so it's all about, you know, looking at yourself and uh, taking a few minutes and uh, then washing it off, you know, flushing it out. And uh, and uh, tomorrow, you know, you, you got to be ready to go. And I, I was really, really pleased with uh, how they played the next day. Boach, the bottom of your lineup has been producing for you uh, throughout this season and especially the last couple of days. I want to know from a manager's standpoint how important it is and how tough it can be to make sure that the guys that maybe aren't everyday players are still getting enough at bat so when you need them in a big sixth inning, seventh inning situation or on a Sunday day game that they're ready to give you good baseball. Yeah, well, I was one of those guys. And uh, trust me, I know uh, what a tough job it is at Major League Pitching when you've been sitting for a week. And really amazing what, uh, you know, Jankowski and uh, and Bubba did, uh, you know, to go out there and put together a good game. And uh, so, you know, they were back out there last night, and they'll be back out there tonight. Uh, you know, you, you have those bench guys get a little hot. It enables you to rest your other guys because this long season. And you're not going to win with your just your eight or nine guys, whatever. It's uh, it's going to be that whole club because they're they're going to have to produce for you. They're going to have to give your guys a day off, especially if you get you know into the season. And uh, so you know, I'm going to try to you know uh, use them all right now, keep them all involved. Uh, last night with that score, I'm, you know, taking guys out, you know, giving a guy like Duran a one at bat, he gets a hit. You know, that may be the one that gets them going. You're hoping. Uh, uh, Miller got to play a couple of innings at first base. Uh, uh, trust me, I've been there. And uh, so I, I probably do think about them as much as the regulars. Jake Odorizzi is going to be out for the year, but he did say something, I believe it was yesterday or the day before. He said, my contribution on the field is zero, but I can still contribute in the locker room, looking up video, trying to help in whatever way possible. There's some value in that. First of all, what does that mean to hear? And second of all, how can players contribute when they can't be on the field? Well, I mean, you got a player like Jake. He's uh, he, he's uh, been around. You know, he's a guy that's pitched too. You know, he's not a guy that just relied on stuff. And and so, uh, you know, that's the attitude you 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 really want to hear from these guys uh, uh, because they they do have something to offer. You know, it's another set of eyes and ears that. Uh, 
maybe can help somebody. It can be one thing. It could be, uh, you know, showing a grip on a, a pitch. It can be uh, knowing the hitters on the other side, uh, the success he had against them. Uh, uh, and so, you know, hey, you're on the DL, but, you know, hey, you're still employed by the club. And uh, so, you know, that's that's what you're hoping to hear. So uh, I think it's a great attitude, a major setback from him. Uh, for him, I'm sure he's disappointed, but the fact that, uh, you know, he's he wants to uh, stay involved, he, he he wants to be part of it, uh, that's that's great to hear. And then anything, what can you tell us about maybe what happened with Mitch Garver? And then since we're a very observant show, if you want to tell us anything about what that beeping is. <laughs> yeah, I just... Uh, Shut off the car here. Okay, we're just <laughs> having some fun I, I was with you. There was a car uh, running in the parking lot. I had to uh, make a quick errand run uh, before we leave on the road tomorrow, so I had to leave the ballpark and take off for about ten minutes. Uh, like groceries. That's why I missed call. So, but anyway, um, uh, I'm sorry. Where Mitch where Garver? Were we? Yeah. Oh yeah, Mitch. You know he actually was running, and you know he's kind of a freak deal. He he was just slowing down and. Uh, you know, he has a little, a very uh, minor little uh, fraying, or they might call it a small tear of the uh, meniscus. Uh, and so we we don't want to uh, risk losing him for uh, a longer extended period of time. So, you know, our medical staff or doctors uh, feel like, you know, a 10-day IL will serve him well, that inflammation will go down, and uh, the risk of uh, making it worse uh, really lessens uh when that happens, uh, now I can say on Mitch's side, he was crushed. He was really disappointed because he's, you know, he had to deal with the tough year last year. And he's had injuries in his career. It's the last thing he wanted to do, but uh, he he understood. And, uh, and so, um, you know, he's going to go on the IL for 10 days. Meanwhile, he can take back and practice and do some things. Uh, he just won't be catching. With uh, when when Adolis goes up with the bases loaded, do you now always expect a grand? Sl- like, do you tell him, <laughs> "Hey, you know, you've done it before. You got to do it again." Yeah, I do. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I think he's, you know, he set that bar early, so no, that's that's what we expect. And uh, but anyway, uh, I. Uh, I, uh, you know, would love to have this guy up at the plate because he really wants to be there, man. He he wants to be in the moment. I think uh, just a you know short time I've gotten to know him. He he loves that uh, you know that at bat. Uh, you know, with the crowd getting into it and everything. Yeah. So, uh, but that 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 was uh, that was a big one for him, especially after pitch before was called a strike and uh, um, and he bounced back and uh, and and let it go. Yeah, and that pitch didn't even look, really look like it was a. It could be a home run pitch to him. But he you know? called the grand slam <laughs> sign. What is yeah. the grand slam sign that you show up there to the players? Yeah, man, no, that's on Beasley. I told him, you know, <laughs> he, he, it's it's up to him to call that. He's he gives them the signs. They they don't look at me, so um, I'll, I'll ask Bees what what he gives. Awesome. And Boach, last one from me is the Kansas City defense against left-handed hitters. That's pretty interesting because it feels like if you can hit the ball down the line, which is, I know, difficult to do, it looks like an automatic triple. And if you're Bubba Thompson, it might be a home run. Yeah, well, they're, they're, you know, they won't do that on Bubba. But, right. Uh, yeah, but it's uh, I think it's a defense that uh, you know, a few clubs will run against our guys uh, with Seager and you know, I saw uh, a team do it with Lowe up there. And, uh, of course, we saw it with Jonah. And, uh, and, and somebody asked me, well, well, did Jonah see that and uh, um, and try to lob it over his head? I said, no, I, I, you know, we wish we were all that good. But uh, um, but it worked out great. So, you know, one time it worked for him and another time it didn't. Have you guys practiced that defense at all in spring training? No, 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 we have not, uh, you know, now we will have our guys, you know, they'll, they'll, uh, come up with, uh, suggestions on, on, uh, something that's, uh, you know, away from the uh, traditional defense and, you know, Hey, we'll listen, whatever, but, uh, it's always going to be the situation. You'll notice they, they'll do it with nobody out, but with, with, uh, yeah, I mean, with nobody on base, but with somebody on base, you know, they'll go back to to the conventional defense. 
Well, we appreciate the time as always, and I know you'll be busy leading into the game, but Andrew Heaney will be on our station at 320. So nice. if you want to listen, that would be fantastic. Well, that's awesome. You know, that he's on. I mean, what what a game, man. That, I mean, that's that's just a, a special game to watch, it, you know, for someone to accomplish what he did, you know, the nine consecutive strikeouts. So good for him. Good bounce back. Uh, uh, you know, great effort for us, too.